So it's official from Intel themselves at their 2022 investor meeting, the Arc Alchemist desktop chaps, uh, chaps? Desktop chaps? Desktop graphics cards. I have no idea what I was saying. <laughs> anyway, uh, they're coming in quarter two, 2022, not quarter one. Although it is still true that we will see Intel Arc Alchemist GPUs in quarter one, it's just looking like it is confirmed to be the notebook segment. And this is what I've been saying I've expected for quite a while now. Now, what about in terms of performance can we expect? And also what about the future of Intel GPUs? I've got some interesting details. Well, first of all, in terms of performance, it's been rumored forever now that their top end chip is gonna be along the lines of an RTX 3070, maybe 3070 Ti. And we've even seen some um, benchmarks leak that I've reported on in other videos uh, that did seem to confirm that, although those were synthetic benchmarks, not gaming benchmarks. However, take a look at this. And you know what? My fat head's in the way, so Thanos snap. I don't exist anymore, but you can still hear me. Ooh, spooky. Anyway, so what is this? This is still from this investor meeting, and I find this quite interesting. First of all, Intel Arc Alchemist. Notice these product segments here, okay? We've got entry-level, mainstream, performance, enthusiast, and ultra-enthusiast. Now, what we have here going into future years are after the Alchemist GPUs that we're expecting to get here this year. We're looking to get Battle Mage and then Celestial, and right, this is ABC, that's how you can tell, okay. And then we've got some years here, but notice that it's not just years, notice these columns, right? And notice this, it creeps up. So here's how I'm interpreting this slide. I think that performance is your 3070, well not 3070 necessarily, but currently 3070 type performance, or for the AMD side, your 6700 XT. So I think that this is what I would interpret as the 700 or 70 class of card, right? And it looks like they're expecting to be at the top end of that, as well as hitting the mainstream, which I think this would be your 60 class or 600 class cards. And then I think your entry level is way down there at your like uh, 50s, maybe below 50. So this might be like your 50, 50 Ti, and this is like below that. And this is what we kind of expected, where I think we, uh, you know, we saw the 3070 type performance and then, you know, cut that down, cut it down again, cut it down again. There's your at least four product stack levels um, from, from this GPU. Now, here's what's interesting. Moving forwards, at least it looks like they're targeting creeping into this enthusiast segment. And then into the celestial architectures, it looks like they're anticipating competing at the ultra enthusiast segment and maybe beyond. Ooh. So what do I think that means? So I would interpret the enthusiast level to be your 80 or 800 class card and your ultra enthusiast to be your 90 or 900 class or Titan class or whatever you want to call that. So I would say that what this means, first of all, isn't anything guaranteed at all, right? This is no guarantees, okay? But what I do think it means is that this is what Intel is at least targeting. They are, I think, looking like targeting that upper end of the 70 class performance right now, creeping into competing at the high end with their next gen battle mage in 2023 to 2024 and 2024 plus, I think they think that they will be as good or better as Nvidia and AMD. Is that wishful thinking? Is it even slightly accurate? Who knows? But it is interesting to see their, um, you know, see, see what they're thinking. Now, let's move on to a super quick story and then jump into some AMD GPUs. Uh, looks like Crucial is just getting rid of their ballistics memory for no stated reason whatsoever. And all that's telling me is that I need to go buy a matching set of my current 32 gigabyte ballistics because, um, I, I, you know, if I want to get a matching memory set in the future, apparently that might not be an option. Ballistics not going to be a thing. So, yeah, there's that. Now, jumping over to some slightly more interesting stuff. So AMD has lifted its embargo on their six, Ryzen 6000 based laptop designs. So I'm sure that as of the time of filming, 
there's already a bunch of big official um, reviews of these things going up, and I'd encourage you to look into those if you're interested. I'm just going to give us a quick overview of what does AMD claim that their uh, you know performance will be like on these things. I think they've given us some interesting slides, so let me boom disappear again. Now you have to look at their slides really carefully <laughs> to understand what they're saying they're competing against and whether or not they're using FSR and things like that. So it looks like this slide is their um, 6800U Ryzen 7, but notice that it's using their 680M entry-level graphics chip. So I don't think this is just right the the integrated bit on the on the chip, right? And they're putting it up against the i7 with the 1165G7 Intel Iris Xe graphics, and they're showing that they are at least uh, against that chip, right? And they they are specifying 28 watt TDP. Um, but they do appear to have a very significant performance lead over the Iris Xe, which is interesting. Um, looks looks quite good. Now it does say that they are whoops um, definitely down at low details, but it does look like this is 1080p gaming. Interesting. Now, swapping over here, they're showing it up against the MX450. So the uh, GeForce MX450 entry-level mobile uh, GeForce card, and again, showing some pretty decent 1080p performance at the low image quality preset. And currently, it does not look like this is requiring FSR. Now, if you look at the games that they're doing here, some of them are just like, yeah, CSGO, okay, fine. But I mean, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Deathloop, Borderlands 3, Metro Exodus, Cyberpunk. I mean, Cyberpunk's not a 60 FPS, but I mean, hey, that's something. So honestly, this looks like it could be some pretty decent um, entry-level mobile stuff here. And here they're showing it up against what they're calling the GTX Max-Q. But as far as I could tell when I looked for more details here, um, it appears to be a 1650 Max-Q, appears to be what they're actually comparing against at, on, on this slide. And notice here that they are losing the way I'm interpreting this is they're losing at native performance, but then I, I believe that this extra bit is FSR. And they're saying between balanced and quality FSR equivalent, and this is balanced preset. Okay? So that's actually pretty aggressive FSR. So I've got to say, in most situations, that's not going to look anything like native. So to me, I don't know, on a small laptop screen, and again, if you're just on some kind of entry-level graphics chips on a laptop, I'm not saying it would be stupid to use this if you were just trying to play the game, but I, I think that something that's equivalent to the balanced preset, that is a significant when you're already down at 1080p. Honestly, ultra quality already looks kind of nasty at 1080p. On a small screen, it might look okay. But then going down to the quality preset is usually pretty not great. And going all the way down to balanced kind of makes it look like an oil painting rather than a crisp, clear game, in my opinion. So keep that in mind. Now here they have that 660M going up against the uh, Iris Xe again here. Um, so another slide of that. And these are AAA games at low detail settings, it looks like. And then we have up against the MX450, low image quality, and they're showing how like the FSR and stuff, you know, helps us out. Anyway, let me pop back into the picture. So I know that wasn't like a super thorough in-depth review. I don't have any review samples of these. I'm sure other channels do better. What's going on? My hair's like sticking up there. Ah, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> all I've got to say though is that this looks like pretty reasonable performance for a entry-level... Uh, kind of budget laptop where you can, hey, actually get a little bit of gaming done and looks looks fairly competitive. And what I'm more interested in is the desktop version of this because my final thoughts here, and I might talk more about this in a future video, is like, okay, the future of, of graphics cards, right? The future of graphics cards, and we've seen prices are insane, and I do think they're going to come down a bit, but I think the absolute low-level entry-level stuff I'm not sure we're gonna ever see the like $100 GPUs again. 
I think what we might really actually see is more along the lines of APUs getting a lot better, the integrated graphics into the, into the CPU. So I almost wonder if we'll start to see the actual real entry level kind of get taken up by that slot. Because once, 10, once those are capable of 1080p gaming at reasonable presets, maybe not low, but maybe, you know, medium, could the desktop versions of these handle the games at more like medium settings uh, with 1080p 60 FPS? Um, that's where I think we'll start to see that low end segment. And that's why I think that, that that's what I think is gonna happen to the future of the market, where that low end segment will start to just be integrated. And the actual discrete GPUs will be um, more expensive, but also more powerful than, than we used to get. All right, guys, hope you all have an excellent day.